Mad Dog Sports Radio. Number to call up as always is 888-MAD-DOG-6. That's 888-623-3646. Lots of stuff to get into today, no doubt about it. <clears throat> Got to get into the Los Angeles Rams and Jared Goff and the fact that the number one overall pick ain't even on the damn active roster. We definitely got to talk about that today. We got to talk about these new college football rankings. That's certainly something to get into. We've got NFL season about to unfold. The reigning defending Super Bowl champion, Sands, Peyton Manning, going up against the team it beat down in the Super Bowl. That would be the Carolina Panthers, led by Cam Newton. Whole bunch of stuff to get into this afternoon, but not before I'm going to go the hockey route. Don't faint. I said hockey. I'm going to lead this show with hockey, but not really. John Tortorella, former coach for the New York Rangers. I don't even know what the hell the name of the coach, the team is that, that he's doing now. I forgot it. It slips my mind right there. The Columbus Blue Jackets. I think that's it. He's also the coach for Team USA. He goes on the air, ladies and gentlemen. And he sits there and he says to ESPN's very own Linda Cohn that if Colin Kaepernick or any of his players, rather, would emulate the behavior of Colin Kaepernick and not stand for the national anthem, he would bench them for the entire game. That's what he said. Well, I have a response to that, a retort to that. It's somewhat predictable. Uh, but nevertheless, I'm going to give it to you. I believe... As I stated this morning on Good Morning America, because you know I'm honored to be on Good Morning America when I show up there. I mean, they're allowing me on national television, network television, allowing me to sit up there and bless you with my presence or allowing you blessing me with your presence. Good Morning America. Robin Roberts and Michael Strahan were talking to me. Love y'all, by the way. Love y'all. I go up on Good Morning America this morning. And I said, I don't know what the hell this man was thinking. But I do know this much, ladies and gentlemen. If John Tortorella, former coach of the New York Rangers and the Columbus Blue Jackets present coach, if that man doesn't come out, apologize and acknowledge the error of his ways immediately, I believe he should be removed as coach of Team USA. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't feel this way about any coach. I don't feel this way about an NFL coach or an NBA coach or a Major League Baseball coach or even an NHL coach. Those are private industries allowed to enforce rules, regulations, and, per and preferred decorum that they want associated with their sport. Makes total sense to me. Nothing wrong with that. But when you represent the United States of America, when you represent Team USA, when you are all about that red, white, and blue, and that flag, yet you ignore the civil liberties that are granted to us by the United States Constitution, you have to go. It's just that simple. Now, some people might not look at that way. They may sit up there and say, Tortorella, come on, Stephen A. I mean, damn, he don't have to do that. I mean, he has the right to impose it. No, he does not. No, he does not have that right. He does not have that right, ladies and gentlemen, because he's representing Team USA. And when you represent Team USA and you wear that red, white, and blue, you're supposed to epitomize all that the United States stands for. It doesn't just stand for you standing at attention and honoring the American flag and the Star Spangled Banner. It also stands for you having the right not to. Those are the rights that were fought for. Those are the rights that have been granted to us as American citizens. Those are the rights that no coach representing the United States of America has the right to impose against you. And that is what John Tortorella did. You can slice it any other way you want to. Again, if this was him coaching the Columbus Blue Jackets, if this was him coaching the Toronto Maple Leafs, if this was him coaching the Edmonton Oilers or somebody like that, and that's the position that you take, nothing but respect. The NHL is the NHL. 
But this is Team USA. It's not about what you will or will not do. It's about what your inalienable right is to do what you do. John Tortorelli should be forced to apologize and retract his statements effective immediately or he should be removed as coach of Team USA. Get another damn coach. Now, in fairness to John Tortorelli, because we all know that Stephen A., I mean, I'm a fair brother. It's all about fairness. My boy Jeff always says fear is a place where they judge pigs. It doesn't exist. While I'm here to tell you that sometimes it does exist. It exists in the world of Stephen A. Smith because I'm a fair-minded individual. I believe in being fair. I believe in trying to be as honest as I possibly can be. I believe in trying to be even-handed. So we want, we want to be fair here. Tortorella is somebody, according to Robin Roberts on Good Morning America this morning, I believe she said to me that he has a son serving active duty. I'm not sure. I think that's what she said. I think that's what she said. And if indeed he had a son or has a son who has served in the armed services and that red, white, and blue honoring the flag, standing in attention for the national anthem, I do understand his fervence or fervor when it comes to supporting the national anthem. It makes sense. He still doesn't have the right to say what he said. He still doesn't have the right to do what he said he would do to a player that imitated the actions of Colin Kaepernick. But at least you understand the level of sensitivity that it comes that comes with what he had to say and why. At least you get that. It makes sense. And because that makes sense, I got to give love and respect where it's due and say, okay, it makes sense. But the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't make sense to me. And I don't believe that John Tortorella should be allowed to get away with this. It's wrong. I think that at this moment in time, it is time that Team USA forces him to make a decision, apologize or get the hell up on out of here. Be gone and let somebody else coach Team USA. I'm only talking about Team USA. If this were the National Hockey League, I would say, hey, they're a private entity. They could do what they want to do. That's the world we've lived in. That's the bottom line. But John Tortorella, he crossed the line here. You're talking about imposing your own personal right, your own personal beliefs on somebody's rights to the point where you usurp their rights. I think that's beyond the pale. I think that is excessive. I think that is intolerable. And I think he has to go unless he apologizes and retracts his statement. Triple A Mad Dog 6 is always the number to call up. That's 888 623 3646. That's one of the items. That I wanted to get into. You know. The other items. A couple of things on the college football rankings. Texas. Beat Notre Dame. 50 to 47. In Wisconsin. They moved up to the polls. In like 10th or 11th respectively. After their win over. Um, LSU. Here's what I don't understand. You're Texas. You weren't even ranked. How the hell you move up that high? And why would you move up that high if you just gave up 47 points? Hoping to have Charlie Strong on this afternoon. Looking forward to talking to him. I'm a fan of his. But I got to admit to you, I don't understand how you move up so quickly, so rapidly, and you gave up 47 points in your opener. I don't understand that. I just don't. What does that say about the other guys that were ranked? What does it say? Triple Eight Mad Dog 6 is always the number to call up. That's 888-623-3646. Another thing I wanted to get into. <sighs> this Jared Goff situation with the Los Angeles Rams. Ladies and gentlemen, could y'all help me out here? How in God's name are you the number one overall pick in the NFL draft? And you ain't even on the active roster for week one. Is it just me? Is it just me? How are you the number one overall pick in the draft? 
and you're not even on an active roster. You know why I'm not fixated on that question, even though I just asked it? It's because I think an even bigger question should be asked. And that is this. How does Jeff Fisher still have a job? He is entering his 22nd season as a head coach in the National Football League. 15, 15 years, 15 seasons, he's been out of the playoffs looking in. Six times he's made the playoffs, entering his 22nd season, and the dude just got a contract extension. Not to mention the fact that you guys could have drafted Carson Wentz, you did it. Could have drafted Dak Prescott, you did it. You just got to look at the Rams right now, and specifically Fisher, and ask yourself what the hell is going on. You drafted Trey Mason a, a few years ago. Lord knows what the hell has happened to him psychologically with some of the stuff you've read about he's been involved in. Todd Gurley is a stud. You got to hope that he doesn't get hurt on you. What wide receivers? I mean, I love Tavon Austin. What help have you gotten him? I mean, who's that tight end? Lance Kendricks? I mean, who the hell are these people? I don't know, man. I got to admit, I don't know. Something's just fishy. Something's a bit awry. Something just ain't right. And I don't know what to do about it. You're the number one overall pick, and you can't even be on the active roster. Do you have any idea, ladies and gentlemen, how bad that has to be? That you can't even be on the active roster. I mean, it's some bad stuff, y'all. This really, really, really is some bad stuff. And it needs to be said. Somebody's got to say it. Triple Eight Mad Dog Six is always the number to call up. That's 888-623-3646. We'll continue to talk about Tortorella. We'll get into the rankings. Of course, Charlie Strong, head coach for the Texas Longhorns, will be on the show with us a little while, in a little while. And of course, there's something to talk about as it pertains to Jared Goff and the St. Louis Rams, not the Los Angeles Rams. I'm just trying to figure out how Derek Fisher has still has a job. Matter of fact, let's make that the question. How does Derek Fisher still how does Jeff Fisher still have a job? I mean, you know, with people like him, shouldn't everybody have a job? I don't know what to say. I really don't. Triple Eight Mad Dog Six is always the number to call up. That's 888-623-3646. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, Sirius XM, Mad Dog Sports Radio, Channel 82. Clear. What's up, everybody? Today is your lucky day because you're getting bonus time with this man who is very busy, but he is going to answer your questions. We had some Facebook questions, comments for you. One, some of them. Stephen a. Some yeah, of them. We're, they we're better not be them. idiotic questions. I know that much. People. I don't All have right. time. All right, let's get into it. So this one is from Victor Alfonso. He said, "Having a oh boy, here we go. Having a role in General Hospital. Is there an action movie for Stephen A. Smith in his near future? Maybe co-starring Denzel Washington." Well, first of all. I don't care what Denzel Washington calls me for. He ever calls me, I'm going. I don't give a damn if it's to be a vagrant. You understand? Mm -hmm. If it's to have be in a scene where I can't say a word, I don't <laughs> care what it is. Denzel calls be me, extra. I'll be an extra. I'm coming. I'm, there's no doubt. It's my man. I'd uh, like to but, see the action scene. But you I, think I, you can I, handle me, that? Yeah, I think in certain respects I can. I wouldn't be able to you know, handle like the stuntmen doing mm -hmm. with the cars and stuff. But I would love to be in Fast, one of the Fast and Furious yes. movies. I'm a Vin Diesel fan. Mm -hmm. I, I miss my man Paul Walker, God rest his soul. Tyrese is my boy. I mean, I, I mean, mm -hmm. Ludacris is my boy. I would love to be in that movie. Mm -hmm. But they've never invited me. Mm. Never. Jordana Brewster's not so bad. Maybe play your love that interest. That is true. Just, right? well, no, no, you know. You, you got some others. I like, I <laughs> get another. I, mean, I, I, I like. I like thicker women. Oh, okay. I just do. Okay. Well, let's just, just put do. it out there. Facebook. That's for you. I We're only do. getting that here. I just. I don't need a woman skinny as me. What are we gonna do? Rub bones and make a fire? How that ain't gonna work? I need more than that. <laughs> I just. I need some meat. I need some meat. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh 
boy. We'll, I'm just we'll, saying, we'll move on yes. uh, on that note. So Steve and I like some thick in case you were concerned. A little thick. A little thick. Just a little. Just, just a little. Just perfect just amount of thickness. Voluptuous okay. is the okay. word. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Jeff Witten writes, Steve and I, I got to know, how do you feel about your Yankees' chances? Are you enjoying the youth movement in the Bronx? I'm not. I don't feel good about their chances to make the playoffs. They're four and a half out of the East. They're three and a half out of the wild card spot. But I will give the Yankees credit where credit is due. I think that, you know, I, I was speaking to Pedro, uh, our, our baseball analyst, mm-hmm. and he's right. I think that Joe Girardi is doing maybe the best job of his managerial career. He's absolutely sensational. I love the kid Sanchez and what he's been able to do. I see uh, Chase Headley hit a, a home run last night. Gregorius hit a triple. Uh, you, you see uh, Castro and these boys. Uh, listen, I love the youth movement and the Yankees being relevant right now. Having transitioned mid-season for uh, mid-season uh, to uh, this youth movement doesn't bother me at all. I like it. Sometimes you gotta sacrifice uh, things in the moment mm-hmm. for ultimate greatness. Yeah. Sometimes you have to wait for the greatness to come so long as you can hold on for it to a li- for a lengthy period of Maybe time. Maybe you'll even get and Tebow too if you're lucky. Oh, if please. The Braves Tebow is not allowed to wear a Yankee uniform. <laughs> I would not allow that. I have power with the New York mm. Yankees. I really? personally would never allow Tim Tebow to wear a Yankees uniform. I would sit up there and call Randy Levine and Hank and Hal, the resident sitcom brothers. You I know, like how you have them on of, first name son, basis son, there. Son Hank of the Hal. great George Steinbrenner, yeah. the greatest owner in the history of sports. I would have influence mm-hmm. over Tim Tebow coming becoming a the Yankee. They will not allow it. I will not allow it. It will not happen. All right, this one from Walter. Walter, thank you. He congratulated me on my one year anniversary. I've really helped this man bring up a game. You I. He's really stepped it up. You I. All right. No. But this one, he wants to know from me who do you. Great. Thank you. Who do you have winning the Super Bowl and what? Oh, that's tough. The season starts tomorrow. They already want Super Bowl picks? I'm not giving you that. Yes. Well, watch first take. Yes. What the hell are you doing Tune asking me that take. on first take? That's what, that's what first take is for. Why are you trying to get an inside scoop before you tune into the show? You get Turn other inside on scoop on ESPN <laughs> two. You understand? You don't sit up there trying to get an answer like that from me when we ain't even make our picks yet. Hell is wrong with you. Wait until tomorrow. Next question. All right, I'm going to do one more for you. You want to go Rodgers or you want to go NBA Westbrook? In terms of what? To finish for the people. I'm going to surprise you. For Which the question people? do you want to do? You want to stick uh, with NFL or NBA here? You know, whatever tickles y'all fancy. All I right, can we'll, flow, we'll go I can NBA. Flow with it. This one's from Kevin A. Williams Jr. When Durant's contract is up, and if Golden State doesn't win a championship, do you see Westbrook swallowing his pride to reach out to him to come back? No. To, okay, say no shot. No. I can answer Russell that. Russell Westbrook. That's not who he is. That's not what he's made up of. And a matter of fact, I don't even know if he'd want to ever play with Kevin Durant again yeah. after Kevin Durant left him. Gotta keep in mind something. Kevin and how Durant, he told listen, him, listen, or, or didn't tell him going, for that, that matter. That's where I was going. So you tried to beat me to the point. You know, you the moderator and stuff, but now you're trying to be Max. Which one is it, Molly? Which one is it? Can I answer the <laughs> I question? I can't help him. Thank He's you. All-knowing. Here's the deal. Kevin Durant left, and Russell Westbrook heard about it when the rest of us heard about it. That's supposed to be your man. Yeah. That's supposed to be somebody you always call your brother fighting for. Whatever. Mm-hmm. You can't pick up the phone and call the brother. You can't go and see him and Give let him, him know. Up. Really? Really? I mean, that that that's, listen, that's bad. I mean, Kevin Durant's a good guy, uh, but he's made some mistakes mm-hmm. from time to time. I think that was one of them. As you like to say, that's so disrespectful. Very disrespectful. Do we have time for one more or are we done? Yeah, we can do All one right. more. All we right. can do we one got, more. We got one so, more for you here. I guess so. Hurry up, though, because they, they interfere with my lunch. This better be good. Well, this, so you and Damian Woody have big conflict on screen. It seems genuine. I love that you still let him on the show, though. It shows that you have no fear. Well, so they all, think, wait, wait, wait. They're wondering if it's manufactured. But I feel like they're setting you up like they feel like Woody got you. Well, if if anyone thinks I'm manufactured, they don't know me, they don't okay. know the show because that never happens. <laughs> secondly, I can attest to that. secondly, let's be clear about something here. I can be as brave as I want to be with Damian Woody. It ain't nothing physical because I'd have no chance. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not yeah. stupid. I'm brave away from the screen. I'm brave while we're on TV because I know he can't hit me while we're on camera. Yeah. Oh, but off the air, we're very nice to each other. Mm-hmm. That's like a that's you like know a you got the basketball bill. That's not, like a, not but, the, but, 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 but I will say this: Damian Woody and I go back years. He's been at ESPN for quite some time. Uh, he's a passionate dude. He feels very, very strongly about things. He knows I feel very strongly about things. But once I go, once I go off the air, I mean it's all good. We're, we're brothers. I mean he's a good dude and he's very knowledgeable about the sport of football. He knows a hell of a lot more than I do. But sometimes he's wrong because they're thinking about it from a player's perspective. Mm-hmm. 
everybody keeps forgetting I've been a journalist for 23 yeah. years covering these guys. So they're not going to get up. I can quote them. Mm -hmm. I, know, I know what they've said. I know what they've done. Relationships, and they have, history. And they have the history that is at my mercy. Yeah. See, I'm the guy reporting on them. They're the ones who actually recorded, did the history. They're so making I the got notes. They're just breaking it down. I'm just breaking it down. So they're at my mercy. There's no player, no coach. You saw how John He Rudy has been killing it, though, you have to admit, when he's coming Damian on the Woody's show. Woody's he's been bringing Damian it. Damian Woody is we love fantastic. He'll voices. be on the floor. He'll be on the show more. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he will be at my mercy. If he gets out of line, I'll bring him back in line. I let John Gruden get away with a little oh, something Oh, that was day so good. Because I just wanted to if make good TV. If you didn't see the show, check I, out I, the rear. I just, wanted, I just wanted to make good television. That's all. I just let John Gruden feel he himself. He checked you. I want, no. You met your match. I, Admit I, it. You I, I felt look, like you please, met your match with please, Gruden. You please, did. Please stop I the nonsense. Here's the deal. He's John lying. Gruden, I tricked him. Oh, you because did. Because he got so comfortable getting at that. me. Listen to me. He got so comfortable getting on me on the show. Listen to him say he wants to come on the show. Mm. So that's all I was trying oh, to do. Oh, it was a setup. It was a yeah. setup. It was a setup. Was a setup. And when John Gruden comes in, watch him get beat down once he comes up in there. I actually feel sorry for him and what's coming. I really, really do. Because John Gruden's in the I cannot wait for that. He said he's going to give us an hour in Bristol, so I hope of course he, he is. Of course he is. Of course he is. Or oh, he's going to invite me to Tampa. Either way. I'm sure you know? he wouldn't mind that. There's some yeah. nice establishments. You know what? He Tampa. could sit me in his quarterback camp, except he doesn't ask me the questions like I'm a quarterback. He could just come back and forth to me about different items he wants to touch on. He I'll said you up. threw softballs at him, too. He said he wants he's, real questions. He was just trying to do that for television. You saw how flustered he was. He struggled a little bit from time to time. He tried to <laughs> dance like Fred Astaire a little bit there. He got caught out there. But it's all right. I gave him a little mulligan. I, I threw a little something at him, took some hits because I wanted him to feel comfortable. And I didn't mm. want him getting nervous because John Gruden tends to get nervous from time to time. Look at this. Bonus time with Stephen A. Smith. Always good. Again, we appreciate all of you. Please check out the show. Hit us up with any questions, comments on Facebook. We'll be doing more of this because uh, we want to let you get a little inside. Y'all lie. Your man. Y'all lie. We love you. Our first take fan. Ah. Keep tuning in.